the discovery of a previously unknown human population may change our understanding of ancient Europe. Remarkably, a 65,000-year-old jawbone from northeastern Spain may be from Europe's earliest modern humans, or from a mystery hominid. Although scientists are certain that the jawbone is not from a Neanderthal, they are unsure of its exact nature. Known as the Barnule specimen, scientists came to the conclusion that the mandible's peculiar shape is unlikely to be due to the individual being a hybrid, because it lacks Neanderthal traits. This could be an even rarer specimen or the oldest fragment of modern humans in Europe. Based on its age, location and the absence of one of Homo sapiens' distinctive features, the chin, the mandible has been investigated throughout the past century but was for a long time thought to be a Neanderthal. The first early Europeans modern humans, known as Cro-Magnons, immigrated to Europe and have been living there ever since, possibly as early as 56,800 years ago. All early European modern humans descended from a single founder population that contributed ancestry to modern Europeans, starting 37,000 years ago. They interacted and interbred with the native Neanderthals of Europe and Western Asia, who went extinct 40,000 to 35,000 years ago. Up until recently, early European modern humans were historically referred to as Cro-Magnons in scholarly literature. Since then, the name early modern humans has gained increasing acceptance. The terms early modern human and anatomically modern human are used to distinguish Homo sapiens from extinct archaic human species that are anatomically congruent with the variety of traits seen in modern humans. This distinction is particularly important for eras and areas when anatomically modern and prehistoric humans coexisted, such as the Paleolithic period in Europe. Early European modern humans, or Cro-Magnons, had many common anatomical traits with current Europeans but were stronger, with wider faces, more pronounced brow ridges and larger teeth. These early European Cro-Magnons humans have characteristics that are similar to those of Neanderthals, as well as contemporary African, European and indigenous Australian people. The first evidence of modern human migration into Europe dates to the Upper Paleolithic, and includes a number of modern human teeth with Neronian-era stone tools discovered in France's Grotte Mandarin cave between 50, 6,800 and 51,700 years ago. One of the several contemporary human industries classified as transitional between the Middle and Upper Paleolithic is the Neronian. A member of a previously undiscovered population of Homo sapiens that coexisted with the Neanderthals, or a hybrid between a member of this Homo sapiens group and a non Neanderthal unidentified human species, are the two hypotheses that scientists have developed for what the Barnule specimen may represent. The only fossils found from Europe at the time are Neanderthals, lessening the likelihood of the latter theory. The jawbone was found in the Spanish town of Barnules more than a century ago might be the first evidence of modern humans in Europe. Interestingly, the jaw doesn't quite match any known human species, suggesting that the long-dead owner of the fossil may have descended from a puzzling group of unidentified early hominids. The Barnule specimen, discovered in a quarry in 1887, is estimated to be between 44,000 and 65,000 years old, meaning it dates to the last time of the Neanderthals. Because of its age, its location, and the fact that it lacks one of the characteristics that distinguishes Homo sapiens from other species, a chin, the mandible has been examined extensively over the past century and was long thought to be a Neanderthal. Marine isotope stage 3 began about 60,000 years ago. This was a time of unstable climatic patterns, abrupt retreats of European forests, and the recolonization of wide stepland with grasslands. This dates to roughly the same period as the unusual jawbone. High-resolution 3D scans were taken, and these were used to recreate the missing sections in addition to studying the bone. Then they made comparisons between the Barnule specimen and modern human and Neanderthal mandibles. Early modern humans interacted with the native Neanderthals who had been living in Europe for several hundreds of thousands of years, when they migrated there. The researchers created a computerized model of the whole mandible by digitally reconstructing the original bone's missing pieces, using a technique known as three-dimensional geometric morphometrics. They were able to do this by contrasting the fossil's jaw with those of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. The findings, however, 
revealed something extremely unexpected. The mandible did not resemble Neanderthals in general morphology or share any distinctive Neanderthal features. Although it is challenging to identify the fossil since it lacks a chin, the researchers state that the 3D analysis convincingly placed the mandible within Homo sapiens, in terms of overall morphology. There hasn't been one species that emerged in Europe, that came to life, that sprung to life out of nowhere just in Europe. They all came from Africa. There is no evidence that Neanderthals or Denisovans evolved in Africa. They most likely evolved in Europe from a group of Homo erectus who had left Africa for Eurasia at least two million years ago. The researchers chose to compare the Barnule specimen to one of Europe's first modern human fossils from Romania, because some prehistoric Homo sapiens had less prominent lower jaws than the chinny people wandering the planet today. Previous studies on this person, dubbed Oase-1, have shown that the specimen has 6-9% Neanderthal DNA, indicating that it was a modern human Neanderthal hybrid. Oase-1 nevertheless has a considerably stronger chin than this mandible despite this. Genetic evidence implies that Neanderthals and early modern humans interbred. Genes are thought to have entered the DNA of modern humans between 65,000 and 47,000 years ago, most likely in West Asia shortly after they left Africa. This was problematic because Homo sapiens are distinguished from other ancient humans by having chins. The Barnule specimen also had traits in common with prehistoric hominins who lived in Europe hundreds of thousands of years ago. The Barnule specimen is not a Neanderthal, according to the data, but the absence of a chin causes paleoanthropologists to second guess whether they should classify it as a Homo sapiens. A chin has long been recognized as a distinctive feature of our own species. The hypothesis that the Barnule specimen constitute a Homo sapiens Neanderthal hybrid is ruled out by their complete lack of Neanderthal traits, leaving the researchers with two acceptable hypotheses. The first of these is that the Barnule specimen belonged to a previously unidentified population of modern humans who lived during a period when it was believed that Neanderthals were the only people living in Europe and who lacked a normal chin. Alternatively, the specimen might be the product of a cross between Homo sapiens and an entirely unrelated species of hominid. The authors of the study point out that while hybridization with a non-Neanderthal archaic Homo species would account for the absence of chin features in this mandible, no such population has been found in the late Pleistocene European fossil record. In fact, the only other non-Neanderthal hominid remains in Europe, Homo heidelbergensis predate the Barnule specimen by around 300,000 years, all of which makes it highly unlikely that modern humans interbred with such a species. Comparison with earlier Homo sapiens bones from Africa showed that these individuals had less pronounced chins than we do now. So there are two possibilities. The manidable was either a Homo sapiens from a previously unknown group that coexisted with Neanderthals in late Pleistocene Europe or it was a hybrid between Homo sapiens of this unknown group and a yet-to-be-identified ancient human. Modern humans tend to be more gracile or lighter-built than our more robust archaic ancestors. However, modern humans have exceptional robustness and significant variety in many physiological aspects. The physiology of Neanderthals, and anatomically modern humans can still be reliably distinguished by a few physiological features. Anatomically humans lightly built skeletons have been linked to a shift in behavior, including more collaboration and resource movement. For simplicity, early modern humans have also been divided into early or robust and post-glacial or gracile humans. It is believed that the development of gracile humans reflects a trend toward a more compact and fine-boned skeleton that started between 50,000 and 30,000 years ago. Regardless of whether the specimen is a contemporary human or not, the fact that it is not a Neanderthal is extremely important because it is believed that no other human species existed in Europe at this period. According to the researchers, there is only one option to solve the riddle. Try to extract some DNA from the bone or one of the teeth and sequence it. The Neanderthal child's skull from Belgium, the adult Neanderthal cranium from Forbes Quarry in Gibraltar, the original Neanderthal type specimen from Feldhofer Grotto, and the early Homo sapiens remains from Cro Magnon demonstrated the antiquity of the Neanderthal remains from Spy Cave based on 
the presence of carbonaceous coal. At the time the mandible was discovered. The discovery of the Barnules mandible thus took place at a time when the antiquity of human fossils, and the idea that humans evolved from an ape-like predecessor were becoming more widely acknowledged. Compared to archaic people, anatomically modern humans have smaller, differently shaped teeth. This results in a smaller, more receded dentary, making the rest of the jawline stand out, giving an often quite prominent chin. The central part of the mandible forming the chin carries a triangularly shaped area forming the apex of the chin called the mental trigon, not found in archaic humans. Furthermore, particularly in modern populations, the use of fire and tools requires fewer jaw muscles, giving slender, more gracile jaws. Compared to archaic people, modern humans have smaller, lower faces. Up until a few decades ago, Early modern humans were thought to be Cro-Magnon or Homo sapiens sapiens, whereas Neanderthals were categorized as a subspecies of Homo sapiens, called Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. In accordance with this nomenclature, Cro-Magnons have sometimes been referred to as anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Indeed, it is becoming more typical to refer to Neanderthals as a distinct species, Homo neanderthalensis, such that anatomically modern humans in the context of Europe, refers to Homo sapiens. But the issue is still not entirely settled. As a result, this mandible would be the earliest Homo sapiens ever discovered in Europe, if he truly is a member of our species, the apex of evolution.